Hi everyone, let's go through the chapter 6 and 7 practice test together. Let's look at this first one. I'm asking you to find all the solutions of the equation in the interval between 0 and 2 pi. Well for now we're just going to solve the equation and then we're going to worry about the solutions. The first thing that I noticed is that I have cosine squared plus a sine x. The thing is is that any time I have a squared I know I'm going to be factoring. But at this point, since these are different, it's not going to work very well. So the first thing that I actually did was I looked at my Pythagorean identities and changed this guy. The cosine squared x is the same thing as 1 minus sine squared x. And then I'm going to add the rest of this, plus the sine of x equals 1. Now I want it equal to 0, so I'm going to subtract 1. So I'm going to have 1 minus the sine squared of x plus the sine of x minus 1 equals 0. Well, hopefully at this point you notice that I can cancel the 1 and the negative 1. I really hate when I have to factor anything when I have a negative sine squared, so I'm going to multiply by negative 1. So this leaves us with sine squared x minus the sine of x equals 0. Well, and hopefully you notice that we have a sine in both of these, so I'm going to factor one out. So I have the sine of x. Now when I take out a sine of x here, I still have one left, minus 1. At this point, I factored everything I can, so I'm going to make each part equal to 0. So I have the sine of x equal to 0, and the sine of x minus 1 equal to 0. For this one, I looked at my unit circle. So the first thing I did is looked when the sine is 0. And it turns out that the sine of pi is 0. So x is going to be pi. Now this one, I'm going to add 1 to both sides. So I have this sine of x equals 1. And then once again, I looked at my unit circle and figured out that the sine of 0 and the sine of pi over 2 gives me 1. Now let's go back. I need to be between 0 and 2 pi, and my answers are. So these turn out to be the solutions for this question. So let's look at this one. The first thing that I want to do is get the tangent of x by itself. So I'm going to divide by 3, the square root of 3, on both sides. So I end up with the tangent of x equals, now 3 over 3 will cancel. So I end up with 1 over the square root of 3. We don't like the square root in the denominator, so remember we're going to multiply by the square root of 3 over the square root of 3. So we end up with the square root of 3 over 3. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to look at my unit circle and try to figure out where the tangent of x is the square root of 3 over 3. And it turns out that it's at pi over 6 and 7 pi over 6. But the problem here is that I don't, I'm not asking between a certain interval. So I need to find the general form. So what that's going to be is x equals pi over 6 plus k pi. Now hopefully you remember that um, the period for tangent is pi, so that's why I add k pi. So if k is 0, then it's pi over 6. If k is 1, then we get 7 pi over 6, and so on. So this is what I'm looking for in the answer. Grab the function showing one period. Label key points. Fill in the blanks for amplitude, period, and phase shift for each. You don't necessarily have to do this, but what I did was I changed this to look like this guy. So the first thing we know for sure is the amplitude is 2. The period, and if you don't have enough room, you can always draw an arrow on your test. So we have 2 pi over 4, 
which turns out to be pi over 2. And then the phase shift is pi over 4. And we're actually going to be going positive pi over 4. So the next thing I looked at was this is a negative. So my sine function usually looks like this, but the negative will look like that. So what I did was I started with my x and y, and I started with a negative sine function. So that would be 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. And then my y values would be 0, negative 1, 0, 1, 0. But we know that our amplitude is 2. So I'm just going to put an A here that I'm changing for my amplitude. So I'm going to have 0, but now I'm going to be up 2. So that's going to, or down 2. So it's going to be negative 2, 0, 2, 0. Now let's just keep with the Y for a second. This guy tells me that I'm going to move everything down 1. So what I'm going to do is subtract 1 from all of these guys. So I end up with negative 1, negative 3, negative 1, 1, and negative 1. So my y stuff is done. Let's start with the x side. The first thing is that our period is pi over 2. So that means, I'm just going to put my p here for period, that we're going to go from 0 to pi over 2. Now this is where your fractions are going to come in handy, and I'm going to write these out because if I talk and write at the same time, it doesn't work, but okay. But the thing is, is that we're moving, the whole thing is shifting positive pi over 4. So I'm just going to put an S here for shifting. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to add pi over 4 to all of these. So let me write those in. And now we actually have our graph ready to start one here. Now I know that I'm going to have to go down to negative 3, so 1, 2, negative 3. I'm going to start at pi over 4, so there's a lot of stuff in here, but we're going to put pi over 4 here. Now at pi over 4 we're at negative 1, so I'm going to have to put my dot right over my pi sign, which is fine. Then the next one is at negative 3, and of course that's 3 pi over 8. Then our next one is pi over 2. Of course that's going to go right through my pi symbol. 5 pi over 8, we have 1. And then at 3 pi over 4, we're going to have negative 1. So this is actually what my graph is going to look like. And this is really what I'm looking for on the test. Now the key points, you could just put KP for key points, are these guys. I would like to see you write them as ordered pairs. So pi over 4, negative 1, 3 pi over 8, negative 3, pi over 2, negative 1, 5 pi over 8, 1, and then finally I'll have to put that one down here. 3 pi over 4, negative 1. So what am I looking for for the 20 points? This graph itself is going to be worth 10 points. Okay. The rest of this is just, you know, let's see, we have 10 points left. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. How's that? But for sure, for sure, this guy is worth 10 points correctly graphed. Find the exact value of the remaining trigonometric functions of theta using the given information. Well, I'm giving you that the cotangent of theta is 3 fourths and the sine of theta is less than 0. Sometimes I think it's easy if we create a unit circle and try to figure out where this is going to be. Since the sine is less than 0, it has to be negative. And um, if the sine is negative, Remember that the cotangent of theta is x 
over y. Well, if the sign is negative, then both of these have to be negative because a negative over a negative is a positive. Well, the only place that that's going to occur is down here in the third quadrant. So we have negative 3 is our x, negative 4 is our y, and hopefully you remember that this is a famous 3, 4, 5 triangle where we have 5 here. But if you don't, that's okay. I think I have room here. Just remember that x squared plus y squared equals r squared. And so we'll put x and y in there, and it turns out that our r is 5. So let's start filling in some of the stuff we know. Well, the sine of theta is the same thing as y over r. Well, we happen to know, if I can get this in there, we happen to know that y is negative 4. Not sure what that happened, but that's okay. And r is 5. Let me erase this here and try to get it a little better. Negative 4 over 5. The cosine of theta is x over r. And we know that x is going to be negative 4, I'm sorry, negative 3 over 5, negative 3 fifths. The tangent is y over x. So instead of 3 fourths, it's going to be 4 thirds. It's just the reciprocal. Now the rest of these are pretty easy because the cosecant is just the reciprocal of the sine. So that's going to be negative 5 fourths. And then the secant is the reciprocal of the cosine, so that's going to be negative 5 thirds. Find the exact value of the expression without using a calculator. Remember, when we have the inverse, we're actually saying the cosine of theta equals the square root of 2 over 2. Now all you need to do is look at your unit circle. And it turns out that theta equals pi over 4. And that's the answer for this one. Establish the identity. Now this is where you're really going to use that formula sheet. I like to work on the left side, so let's do that. The cosecant is 1 over the sine, and we're just going to have minus the sine of theta. So what I want is a common denominator. So I need to get the sine of theta in the bottom here. So that just means I'm going to multiply by the sine of theta over the sine of theta. Remember this is over 1. So I'm going to make an arrow here because I'm going to need a little bit more room. We're going to end up with 1 minus sine squared theta over the sine of theta. Now hopefully you remembered from our first problem that 1 minus the sine squared of theta is actually the cosine squared of theta over the sine of theta. Well this is the same thing as saying the cosine of theta times the cosine of theta all over the sine of theta. Well, here's our cosine, that's this guy. And we just established the identity because we get the cosine of theta cotangent of theta. Finally, let's look at this one. I have the sine of alpha is 4 fifths, and it has to be between pi and 3 pi over 2. And the cosine of beta is 12 thirteenths between 3 pi over 2 and pi. And I want you to use this information to find the exact values of 2 pi, of 2 beta. On the test, I might say 2 alpha, or alpha over 2, or something like that. So you're really going to need to have your formula sheet handy. Of course, I add it to this test. So the first thing that I know, so the first thing that I know and I figured out is that the cosine of alpha equals negative four fifths and the tangent of alpha equals three fourths. So how did I do this? Well I made my unit circle and I did my x squared 
plus y squared equals r squared. Now we're going to look at the cosine of beta. It turns out that the sine of beta equals negative 5 thirteenths and the tangent of beta equals negative 5 twelfths. So now I need to find the cosine of 2 beta. So the cosine of 2 beta equals cosine squared of beta minus sine squared of alpha. So we'll have 12 thirteenths squared minus negative 5 thirteenths squared. That turns out to be 144 over 169 minus 25 over 169, which gives us an answer of 119 over 169. So what makes this 20 points? For sure this is worth 5, 5, 5, and 5. So I hope this helped.